Metallic Madness. What's the, what? What is this? Was this a Sonic CD zone? I, I feel like this was a Sonic CD zone. Or was that crazy workbench? Is this a new zone? I don't know. This might be a new one. I think the new ones we've encountered so far were Press Garden, Studioopolis, um, Mirage Saloon. And I think there's supposed to be, like, what, four new zones? Something like that? Maybe this is a new one. I don't know. Uh. Because I think I'm thinking a wacky workbench. You know, I had an interesting thought, and I kind of wanted to. What the? Oh, cool! Perspective shift. So I actually had a thought, and I kind of wanted to put this into a video of some sorts, but it essentially boiled down to what gym we compare between Mario and Sonic. And. Something that I had uh, started thinking about was that with a lot of Mario games, the levels aren't necessarily that memorable. Not accounting, not accounting for boss fights. Boss fights can be memorable in their own right, and they would be an entirely different category. But the levels themselves, the you know the one ones, the one threes, the three twos, the net, the dash ones, you know the uh, the generic worlds, the zones that you go through to get through each, or to get through each level. You don't really, you know, the ghost house and such, sorry. Uh, I am including the ghost house in this because there are a bunch of di different ghost houses, but you never really, the ghost house maybe, okay. But you never really remember, you never really hear anyone say, oh, hey, I remember 3-1 from Mario 2, or I remember yeah, I remember 5-6 from Super Mario Bros. 3. Yeah, that was that was hard. 5-6, oh god. 5-6 uh, is a hard one. No, it's always, when you hear people talking about Mario, you hear them talking about the worlds that Mario has. You know, the fire, or the hell world from Super Mario Bros. 3. Donut Plains. Uh, shit. I had a lot of them in my head earlier. Uh, the ice worlds that Mario has. Every Mario usually has an underwater world that's got like five or six levels that are dedicated to it. Sonic doesn't. In fact, Sonic doesn't even tend to rely on the amount of levels in a particular zone at all. Sonic only means two. But what Sonic does instead is Sonic puts all the effort that it can into those two levels plus boss fight to make them as unique and memorable as they possibly can. Do they succeed? Not always, but you're a lot easily you're a lot easier able to recall Green Hill Zone or Flying Battery Zone or you know uh, Mushroom Hill Zone or uh, Sand Ocean or shit Seaside Hill or City Escape or Metal Harbor or Green Forest or this that and the other thing. Whereas with Mario. Like for Super Mario 64, everyone doesn't talk about the particular stars you got. Everyone talks about the level itself. Well, the world itself, which would be like uh, Bomb on Battlefield or um, what's the Thwomp one? Thwomp Kingdom or Thwomp Castle? Um, you know. But they all have different objectives in them. They're all very built to be exploratory, especially in those, that game in particular. Whereas uh, with like, say, everyone remembers 1-1 one, one from Mario 1. And usually the first level in every Mario game is one that people will always remember. So 1-1 one, one is usually a pretty good one, but you have to specify the game. So we're not gonna get those they're they're just they're just they're just they're just waste of time honestly it's all extra content nothing you need to see but you know for example uh another one would be um 
you know, you can always talk about Green Hill Zone, and everyone knows what Green Hill Zone's from. It's from Sonic, and most people know it's from Sonic 1. If you mention Animal Island Zone, most people know it's from Sonic 3. If you mention Scrap Brain Zone, most people know it's from Scrap Brain Zone. Speaking of, go figure. I swear, I did not know that this was the boss. I swear. <laughs> what? Oh god. <laughs> what? How did I not see that coming? Is this this was the final boss of Sonic One, right? What? Why? <laughs> oh, that was great. I couldn't have lined that up more perfectly. And I didn't even do it intentionally. <laughs> I couldn't do that better if I was trying. Oh crap. Wait, what? Nope. No! Crap. No. There we go. That would be suicide. That almost was suicide. Okay, Eggman. So if you stand here and jump up, yep, you can still avoid them all. No, I picked the wrong one. I have chosen unwisely. I missed! Oh wow, I really couldn't have lined that up any better if I had tried. I chose unwisely. No! No! Oh god, that was close. Too bad for Tails, though. Oh well, his health insurance will cover it. Oh wait, he's an immigrant. He can't have health insurance. Oh. Uh. It's okay, Tails. You'll figure something out. Okay. So we took that down. And now we have to go through that lightning round thing. Got him. How many times do we have to hit him? And how does he switch so quickly? That was close. He's gotta be in this one. Got him! Nope. Nope. Got him! Did we win? Please tell me we won this time. Okay, I think we got through Act 1. Now we can move on to Act 2. But yeah, Mario tends to focus more on the world than they do on the actual individual levels themselves. Within detail-wise. Also, a lot of Mario levels, and I'm going to use uh, Mario 3, Mario... It's Super Mario World. I'm using just these games as my reference off in my head, just so you guys know what I'm talking about. But Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, Super the original Super Mario Bros. And now we are Baby Sonic. And Baby Tails! They didn't have a lot of background, you know, to look at. They didn't have a lot going on for them. It was very minimalist. For the original Mario, they just had clouds and the occasional bush every now and then, but the bush was actually a foreground object. I'm pretty sure. And they had the occasional bush foreground object, but with Sonic, you have incredibly, I'm talking comparatively, detailed backgrounds. Especially now, this is a, what you're looking at right now is a pretty good example. Granted, it was nowhere near this detailed when it was, you know, brand new back in the days of the Sega Genesis, but what we have right now is a pretty, you know, enhanced detail resolution of what you were originally looking at, and there was a lot to look at back then. You know, the waterfalls moved in Green Hill Zone and Angel Island Zone. In Angel Island Zone, the freaking... Uh, why did I think that was a weapon? In Angel Island Zone, the background was on fire for the second half of the level. You know, there was more to the level than just Occasional background dressing, you know, that was 
I told a lot more about the story and about what was going on. They played an active role. They also really fun to look at. Mario backgrounds were there kind of... I guess because they have to be. Just like, I have to not die. I went through 12 lives. I've gone through 12 lives. Need to figure out how to get that. Extra life. I think I know how. Come on, Tails. Perfect. And now we have three again. And now we can get past this grate. But, um, the Mario detail for the backgrounds is very minimalist. Where Sonic put a lot more detail into the background because they felt it was a bigger part of, I guess, the story and to draw you in. There was a lot more to it. Super Mario World got better with this because it started adding, you know, colored skies and... I mean, colored skies isn't necessarily new, but interestingly colored skies. I know, it sounds like I'm basically playing Sonic Fan, but, but I like a lot of Mario games. I like Super Mario 64. I love me some Super Mario Galaxy. I love Super Mario Galaxy 2. My favorite game for the Nintendo DS is Super Mario, New Super Mario Bros. Shit. My favorite game for the Wii right now, and the Wii U right now is... Oh god, oh god, what is this? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. My favorite game for the Wii U and New Super Mario Bros. right now, it's next to Smash Bros., is actually New Super Mario Bros. Wii U. You know, I, I do enjoy a lot of Mario games. Quite a lot. I do like Sonic better, but I'm trying to be as honest as I can in this comparison. I really am. And I might not be articulating myself the best because it is a little bit late, early. But I might not be articulating exactly what I'm trying to say the best. But uh, try to understand if you listening and if you care. I like Mario and I like Sonic. I like them both. And frankly, I don't really try to put them in competition because for me personally, I enjoy Sonic because I like faster gameplay as opposed to... A slower experience, but I like me. I, that's no reason I won't play Mario. I love a lot of Mario games too. Super Mario Bros. 3 was my favorite game for a long time as a kid. Mostly because it was the only video game I had, but you know, it was something. Oh crap. I think I goofed. Is that Amy? Amy Bot. I have to beat Tiny Eggman? This isn't fair. So how do I win? Oh hey, hey! Tiny Sonic 2 boss. Tiny Amy robot. Dead Tiny Amy robot. Tiny Sonic 2 boss! Damn it, Tails. Damn it, Tails. So why would Eggman go through the purpose of building a tiny Sonic, or a tiny Amy, specifically for seducing and exploding Tiny Sonic? Feels a little weird to me. Hey, get back here, fatso. But with that, guys, I do believe we have finished Act 2, and I will see you in the next episode. Until then, peace.